Hello, world. I'm your host, Nixon Sylvain, and I'm here with my co host, Adney Godin, Sister Godin. It is a blessing to see you again. How you doing? I am great, Brother Nick. I, I really, truly just got off of work and just excited about, you know, what we're about to discuss. So, Amen. how are you doing? I am Ooh, blessed. Somebody's almost done with school, so how's that going? I'm overwhelmed, but but by the grace of God, I'm I'm making it through. God is good. But I'm excited um, today, Adney. It's, you know, you ask me how I'm doing. I'm excited. I can't believe that it's almost May. We made it through one quarter. And then now we're about to go into what the second month of quarter, quarter two. So as we were sitting here, we was pondering. We're like, man, you know. It's almost, we're at, almost at the halfway point, Annie. If we're in the fourth month going on to the fifth, the halfway point is the sixth month. So I'm excited. Well, we're getting older. That means we're getting older too, Annie. So <laughs> as time flies, that means we're getting older. So, but that's okay. That's a good thing. That's wisdom. So today, Adney, today we're going to talk about the top, well, the top episodes, um, the top Jesus episode, rather. We going that's what I want to talk about today. And it's it was it's called the good news. That's episode 69. And I'm gonna play a small snippet of it. I, I just thought it was just apropos for for us just to play Jesus. I mean, we're in the month of April, and we already know uh Easter just came and went. So um I think it's it's it would be a blessing just to get a, a refresher and to hear what our dear brother had to say about our savior. So here it is. It's episode 69. You know, us African-Americans, we got them with dreads and, you know, with dark skin and whatnot. Then you can look at the Hispanic culture. They got them with that, that Latin flavor. You know what I'm saying? But, but, but here's the thing though. Each of these nations have a depiction of him. You, you see what I'm saying? They have a depiction of him. So it goes back to the point, nations, you see what I'm saying? Just, 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 just point the nations to Jesus, that Holy Spirit going to do his work. Trust me. So, so I, you know, I don't trip, you know, I don't, I don't trip when, you know, we, we see these different depictions of him. Uh, just, just make sure you're looking at him. That's, that's, that's my thing. But here it is again, you know, the reoccurring term or theme of nations back to, to uh, the Great Commission here, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, right? All authority has been given to me in heaven and in earth. Go therefore and make, I need to sit down on 19 because we believe, and let me be clear with this, let me, let me because this is the new year, 2022. And we believe that salvation comes from Jesus. Jesus saves. And so when we emphasize baptism, we are not talking about baptismal regeneration. We do not believe that the power is in the water within and of itself. In other words, the water within and of itself does not save you. We emphasize baptism because it is a condition set by the Savior that we must meet. And I need to be clear with that. Okay, so let's deal with baptism in this context right here. And it is a few things that uh, Brother Smith talked about in this episode. He talked about how the nation. So we talk about the nation, the Tower of Babel. Um, they were building. They were building. All the nations were together, and then the language, the languages were confused, and all of them scattered. So Daryl talked about how they were at one point they were one, then they scattered. In Acts chapter 2, they came together. You know, God brought all the nations back together. So when God brought all the nations back together, uh, prior to bringing the nations back together, he gave his disciples instructions. He said, go out, go, go to the world, go out into the world, preach the gospel and preach and preach and preach and tell folks about me. And then, but he did tell them to go in Jerusalem and wait for the promise to, for the promise to come from on high. And that's when God brought all the nations back together. 
And I like what Daryl Smith about, he was talking about the color. You know, when I initially played it, you know how folks get caught up in color, Adney? They were like, oh, Jesus Christ is black. Oh, Jesus Christ is Hispanic. Oh, Jesus Christ is Asian. Oh, Jesus Christ is Caucasian. I think people got that mixed up. I think they don't really understand who Jesus Christ is. Is He said, I am what I am. Jesus Christ could be whatever he wants to be. So I dislike when people get caught up in the pigmentation of Jesus' skin. They missed it. The reality is that we have a Savior. Uh, You know, Adney, I can't imagine, right, the folks that get caught up in color and you know, when Christ returned, <laughs> it'll mess up their head. <laughs> They'll probably be looking for a certain pigmentation. Let, let's just say Christ is blue or, or green. You'll be like, whoa, whoa, Christ, I, I thought you was brown or I thought you was white or I thought it'll mess their head up because they was caught up on the wrong things. But what are your thoughts on uh, this Jesus episode? Well, Jesus Christ as a whole, what are your thoughts? Whew. I, I, I think of peace when I think of Jesus. I think of patience. I think of love. I think of salvation. I think of freedom when I think of Jesus. And like you said, um, you can't get caught up of, on the mundane and minuscule things of Jesus. You got to be on the big thing of Jesus, which is he died. He died and he reconciled us to God. He reconciled us to Yahweh. He reconciled us to the great I am by taking on our sins, the things that separated us from Yahweh. So when I think of Jesus, that's what I think of is just his love and patience with and for us. Um, Sometimes people look at these different colors because it makes them have this mindset of superiority where Jesus came and really he was lowly like the the crown that they expected him to wear and the horses they wanted him to ride he came riding on a donkey the most um humble creature cuz don- donkeys are extremely humble creatures and that's what he did And when we think about Jesus, we don't need to focus on his skin color because at the end of the day, what he did for everybody, all nations, it doesn't have color. Love has no color. It's love. And that's what that's what came to me. Amen. Amen. And you know, it's funny because um, the world, the world recognizes Jesus on one particular day. We Christians recognize him every day. <laughs> but the world, it, it, in fact, they celebrate a day. It's called Easter. We it was Easter was just not not too long ago. Easter was on the 17th, about a week ago. And folks was in church, even non-Christians that, hey, I got to go to church. And I guess that's the that's the world's way uh, of celebrating um, the resurrection of Jesus Christ when he died and when he was buried and he when he was resurrected. But Adney, did you know that Easter is not even in the Bible? Easter or bunny or rabbit <laughs> is not in the Bible. So I don't know that correlation where it comes with how did Jesus get mixed up with a bunny? I think that's a that's a worldly thing. It's pagan. The the thing with the eggs, the the thing with the bunny, if you if anyone really truly does their research, they will see that it's all pagan and what it stands for, what the name is. Do your research. Look it up. It's it's the goddess of sex for for Pete's sake. With um, her name was what Esther, Easter, whatever they called it, but that's what it is. And I mean, I don't know how our Lord's passion and love 
<laughs> got mixed up with something so diabolical and um, to me disrespectful, honestly. It really truly is disrespectful to correlate something so pure with something so vile and, 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 and to make it into something for kids so they could go out and get eggs and all this other stuff. That, that to me is just so disrespectful. Yeah, I think sometimes people miss the essence of Jesus. It kind of, I feel like sometimes they make the eggs in a bunny. It, it takes away from Jesus himself. And I know that Jesus is the only God, because we know there's all kind of small gods in this world. But God, Jesus, is the big God. And he's the only big God um, that was risen from death, like death. Uh, couldn't even hold him down. And I want to read the passage that when it's stated that Jesus has risen in uh, Matthew 28, uh, verse 6, it says that uh, and this is when he um, died and he was buried and he was placed into the tomb. It said, uh, he is not here. Uh, he has risen. Um, just as he said, come and see the place where he laid. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So I think that's good news for us, Adney, um, that we know that we we have a God and we know a God uh, that was once dead and now he's alive. And that's powerful because we have had relatives that died and they haven't come back. They're gone. So we're talking about... Um, God himself, 100% man, 100% uh, God, um, death, that's powerful to me. Death uh, couldn't even hold him down. The grave even couldn't hold him down. And that's powerful because when Christ, when he was risen, he was with the, his disciples for 40 days. So you could, you could imagine, so it's not like he was here just for a blink of an eye and, and he just went on to glory he was with them for 40 days at, at, at some point. In fact, some of them didn't even believe that was him. Thomas, doubting Thomas. Dom, doubting Thomas was like, Lord, is is that you? Like he was like in, the, in, in disbelief. But I think um, we should not only wait until Easter Sunday to remember Jesus Christ. I think that's something that should be practiced 365 every day. In fact, we do that um, as Christians. We think about our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, every single day. Adney, I can't tell you, look, every day Jesus Christ is on my mind from sun up to sundown. Um, I'm always thinking about my Lord, uh, what he has done for me, and I'm always um, encouraged or, or um, motivated to uh, share the good news with other people, just like as he has instructed his disciples to do. Any final words? I mean, what else can we and who else can we think about? Yes, yeah, some of us are in relationships. Some of us are married. But that person didn't die for you. Yeah, they could show you that they love you with every fiber of their being. But the true love that no one can mimic it's the love of Christ. Because I'm going to tell you right now, there is no possible way that I'm going to let somebody spit on me or hit me for somebody. No, we ain't doing that. We throwing blows. But what I realized is that um, Christ is the epitome, the definition of love, passion, and what we just celebrated. His love on Friday, that beat, that beating, hanging high, you know, stretched out wide, hung high, giving down and thirsting and saying it's finished. That to me is the beauty of our Lord and Savior, because he did something that most of us would not even do. And that's my final word. Amen. Yeah, that's that's a that's well said right there. So I think that's that's about it, Adney. So I would highly encourage everyone. Um, that was episode sixty nine that we played earlier. 
But we did do a series on Jesus Christ, uh, episode 65, episode 66, episode 67, and episode 68. So we did a five-part series. Go back and listen to those series. Trust me, it will bless you. It's going to bless your life. Because remember that you are created for a purpose and a purpose for God only. Until then, be blessed. That's it for now. But before we go, please continue to listen, subscribe, and share our podcast. Also, if you want to support our show, please scroll down to the bottom of the show notes and click on the link that says buy me a coffee. We would greatly appreciate it. Thank you for listening. And remember, God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And also, Jesus Christ loves you. Thank you. Wait, there's more. What if today was your last day on earth? Would you be ready to meet your maker? Well, Jesus Christ has given us the good news. He told his disciples in Mark 16, 15, 16, and he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. Jesus Christ has instructed his children to share and preach the gospel, which is the good news, which means that Jesus Christ came and that he was sacrificed. He was buried and he rose on the third day by believing and by repenting and confessing and being baptized. You will be saved. So it is your choice. Jesus Christ will not force you. You've heard the message. You heard personal testimonies. But this is your opportunity to give your life to Christ. Don't wait until tomorrow, because tomorrow is not promised. So I hope you submit to the will of God and give your soul to Christ. Be blessed.